Hello friends, it's the Pickman Parson here. And today I'm going to finish a process that I started 15 days ago uh, related to a spiced round. And I want to share that I came by this process by way of a recipe that was shared with me by my friend, Sissy Wynn Thompson. Now, Sissy is a member of our church at Lover's Lane United Methodist Church, and her family are close friends of mine. And um, I was once at a party at Sissy's home, which was for our congregational care ministry, of which she was a part, and it was a Christmas party. And in the context of the party, she invited me to go into her pantry where she showed me a large crock, very similar to this one, uh, it was a 10 gallon crock. And in that crock was a round of beef, a big round of beef, some 30 pounds of beef round. And she said that this was a family recipe that they called spiced round. And I got that recipe um, by way of sissy and got to peek at it through this book called Yet Another Glory. Margaret Wynne Harrison wrote this book. And it's full of great recipes, one of which is the Spiced Round. That's a recipe that's been in this family for well over a hundred years, coming by way of Kentucky and Tennessee uh, to the Wynn family that resided at that time in Wills Point, Texas. I loved reading what Margaret had to say about the Spiced Round and its tradition. In their family, they would put the Spiced Round down, as they say, into the brine, and at about a little before Christmas, they'd actually bring it out as a finished product and boil it, which we're gonna be doing today. And they would serve it not just on Christmas, but really throughout the holidays, even throughout the first of the year into the Christmas season. You know, Christmas is 12 days, not just one. And so um, I was intrigued enough that I thought, hey, it's a pickling process because it's brined and um, it might be something kind of fun to uh, introduce to the Copeland family. So let me talk to you about the steps we've taken thus far. I first bought a 30 pound round of beef and it was a beautiful piece of meat and I trimmed it a little bit of the fat and then um, I poked holes in that beef, some 50 holes uh, that I made with a, a specially equipped walnut uh, puncher and the holes were about as wide as your finger and about as long as your finger. And, um, and we put the spices and the lard into each of those holes. Now, let me talk to you about the spices and the lard. We um, rendered the lard till it was just liquid. And then into that mixture, we put the right amount of spices, which included cinnamon and allspice. It also included pepper black pepper that was cracked, and red pepper and cayenne pepper. And we also added some brown sugar. And that all went into the lard and mixed together. And then we poured that liquid lard into uh, two cookie sheets and put them into the refrigerator overnight to congeal. Well, the next day, uh, they were all ready to be cut into strips. And so we cut them into strips and put the spiced lard into each of those holes, about 50 holes on each side of the round. And then after that, we took the rest of the spiced lard and we iced it just like a cake on both sides. It was covered with this beautiful uh, roundish, uh, brownish, copperish kind of colored um, uh, spiced lard. And then we put it in cheesecloth and wrapped it up really good and then tied it with butcher twine and then put it into a t-shirt, this same t-shirt that the, uh, the round is in right now. And after it was all tied up in the t-shirt, we lowered it into the brine and into the brine it went into this 10 gallon crock. And uh, the brine was made uh, by kosher salt, the proper amount that the recipe calls for and also um, saltpeter, which is potassium nitrite, or um, you can use sodium uh, nitrate, which is what I use because it's easier to find, and it's used in curing meat. And so that's what we use to create our brine. And I lowered this big 30-pound uh, uh, hunk of meat down into the crock, 
And there it sat in our laundry room uh, at room temperature for 15 days. In the middle of the process of brining, I turned the round over as the recipe called for. So it got pretty equal treatment on both the front side, the back side, even though it was fully uh, submerged into the brine for all of that length of time. So now we come to the part of bringing the round out and you can see that it's, uh, the t-shirt is, is similar to the color of the spiced lard that we iced uh, the round with. And the brine looked a little bit like this. Um, it has some floating pieces of lard, but it's a, a, a kind of an orangish color. And that was uh, what the brine looked like when we brought the round out. So now we are ready to uh, boil this piece of meat for the better part of four hours. I'm going to bring the meat to a rolling boil, and then I'm going to reduce the heat to simmer uh, over that four hours. So what I'm going to do right now is get this started. I'm going to put this round into uh, this pot of water. Now, <clears throat> the pickling parson's going to have to uh, um, kind of get ready for this experience because this pot of meat is gonna weigh uh, well over 100 pounds with the water that's already in here. I've got about 10 gallons of water, maybe a little bit less, but about 10 gallons, which sh should submerge um, the, the beef. So here goes. All right, yeah, that's, that's just perfect. Yeah, it's fully in the water here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this is a steamer actually, and I'm gonna push this down so that I keep the, um, the beef underneath the boiling water. I'm gonna put a little weight, uh, ceramic weight that I use when I'm making sauerkraut on top of this so that it'll keep it weighted down. But I'll do all of that off camera. I wanna get started, so here goes. Pray for me. Oh, that's heavy. That's really heavy. Now, this is such a big pot, and I'm going to have it over four different burners. That'll give it some good heat all the way around. And we're going to let that uh, boil. And like I say, we're going to bring it to a rolling boil first and then I'll reduce it to a simmering boil for the next four hours. And so I'm gonna sign off from now, but remember again, there's nothing better than an old recipe, especially if the old recipe is connected to family. And so I'm borrowing from the Wynn family, and I hope to establish a tradition that we'll do annually in the Copeland family going forward. So thank you for tuning in. And this is the Pickling Parson, and we're spicing a round of beef.